So now I want 10k, there's one up there and there's one there next to the 33k I've just done. And this is where four band just gets ridiculously complicated because these are brown, black, black, red, left to right, brown, black, black, red, one, zero, 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 zero. Uh, yes, that's 10k. But read the other way round, it's brown, red, black, black. So that could be one, two, zero, and then a multiplier of no zeros. I mean, it is difficult. I'm pretty sure these are 10k, but I just don't like these four band resistors. So now we have a couple of uh, electrolytic capacitors. There's one up there, 4.7 microfarads, another one down here, 4.7 microfarads, and I've identified the two components I want to use. There it is, 4.7 mu f, mu is the micro symbol. Actually on here they didn't put mu, they just put a big uppercase u, which is a bit, well, not quite right, is it? These are 4.7 microfarads, uh, 50 volts, and of course these are polarity sensitive. Now normally the negative is indicated. So you can see here the white uh, band of arrows with a minus sign in it. That's the negative. So that must go to the negative of here, which is not where the plus is. Obviously, it's the hatched area there. That's negative. So there are my two capacitors uh, pushed through, negative to the hatched area. The legs have splayed out a little bit on the back, so they're holding themselves in nicely. Let's solder those in now. Legs of these electrolytics are quite close together. Can't quite get to that one. There it is. And trim these off with the wire cutters. Trim them not so much that you're trimming solder off, but just that you're trimming the leg off and leaving the solder joint intact. Now when I did my apprenticeship, which was many years ago, we did um, soldering practice and I was always taught that solder joints should be like mountains with a slightly concave shape. So uh, most of those are looking reasonably good. One there in the middle of the shot looks a little bit bulging, but uh, we're going for that Shiny first is important so that uh, you know you haven't got a dry joint. Concave shaped uh, solder joint. So next I want some 47Ks and some 4K7s. 47K on the left, uh, yellow, purple, orange. And 4K7 on the right, yellow, purple, red. Now just place these two uh, capacitors in here. They're the big ones, 220 microfarads, um, well there, there it says 220 microfarads. Now there are two of them because one of them is directly across the power input. So there's a little um, connector here and it says anywhere from, I think that's 8.5 actually, 8.5 to 15 volts. J1 positive here, negative here. So I've aligned the capacitor negatives to this side. Now one of these capacitors goes before the voltage regulator here, which is an LM7806, so that's a six volt regulator, and the other capacitor will be after it. So one is um, providing smoothing at six volts, and the other is providing smoothing at whatever voltage is coming in on the input connect. Now there's a 2K2 there, and there are some 2K2s in various other places, but no 2K2s have been supplied. They've supplied these, which are red, black, red, so that's two, zero, zero, zero. So these are 2K. Um, obviously they've been substituted, they didn't have any 2K2s, but they're near enough. It'll probably work. I'm just gonna shove them in. So the only integrated circuit, um, if you call these things an integrated circuit, is this, it's the 7806 uh, voltage regulator. So let's put that in next. Now let's see if this works. I want to try and bend these legs as neatly as I can. So I'm going to bend them around a screwdriver. Not entirely sure this is going to work, but it's not too bad. I'll straighten those out with a pair of pliers and solder the regulator in. 
my irons at a funny angle because <laughs> yes now see what's happened if you uh, let the joint go cold with the solder still in place the solder gets stuck to the joint let's come at this from a slightly different angle oh why's my iron gone all cold now that's where possibly this iron is slightly more trouble I mean I wouldn't have thought that should be trouble but um, the iron just didn't feel very hot and I struggled a bit getting those joints made so now this uh, side of the board is mostly done now there is a resistor here um, up at this end here which kind of fell out before I soldered it and you can see that it's sitting at a different height to all the others but I think I'm going to leave it there as a sort of monument to ineptitude and uh, now we come to the LEDs and there are lots of LEDs in rows this row here another one there and another one here and the bags of LEDs are these and I'm going to mix them all up even though they're three different colors and uh, I've mixed them up because I'm going to test them all individually so it doesn't really matter that they're all mixed up and I'm going to do that with a coin cell so long leg onto the long edge of the coin cell and it lights up that one's green now you shouldn't really do this with green because the voltage of the coin cell is a little bit high for green LEDs another green let's pick one from down here it's fine with blue and in fact they use these in some of the cheap torches for blue and white LEDs but uh, for green and red and there are some reds in here somewhere you really want to be using a battery that's virtually flat that's another blue so that it uh, doesn't damage your LEDs that's another blue and I know this coin cell is virtually flat uh, but it makes a very good LED tester so I soldered in uh, a blue LED uh, a red LED and a green LED and a few of the components that fit around them and now I'm going to fit this component here in the big circle and also the power connector so do you recognize this? This is the circular component that goes up on the top left hand side of the board. I'm going to put that in now. Now if you recognize that the um, component top left is a microphone, then you may uh, start to be guessing what this is. It's a sound to light system and I've only fitted the first three uh, LEDs and there are going to be more LEDs running up here. Um, now it looks like blue responds to high frequencies because if I go s -s -s, blue comes on red I think is uh, mid-range and green it would appear are the low frequencies let's try that ooh, ooh, ooh. that seems to be triggering green s -s -s, that triggers blue ooh, ooh. sort of triggers red Yes, it's, uh, what would it be, a uh, spectrum analyzer, a crude audio spectrum analyzer. I think I found the frequency of the red one. I have to do it without a, a sibilant sound, because if I go, then I trigger the blue one. And the green one is being triggered by bass sounds. I think it's picking up mains hum because the green one's kind of on all the time. So maybe it's because I'm holding the board and there's some 50 hertz getting into there. It's great fun, isn't it? And uh, if I blow on the microphone, this happens. It seems to mainly trigger the green one because I think the uh, air hitting the uh, microphone is acting as a as a low frequency sound very interesting so now I can reveal that this item is this it is the uh, new 9 to 15 volt voice control level indicating voice indicator module five pound 34 uh, was there any postage on that no free postage and that came from the Kingful Electronic Company. 
So after a lot of soldering, and uh, certainly in this section up here, some rather repetitive soldering, I've uh, finished the project and uh, it all seems to be working. All the LEDs come on. If I clap, I can make them all come on. So now it's time for a bit of music. Now, of course, music's a bit of a nightmare on YouTube. So I'm going to pick some copyright free music. So this is from the uh, YouTube audio library. Uh, free music or sound effects to enhance your videos. I like the look of this one, Destructoid uh, Dance and Electronic Dramatic. Let's go.